Welcome to the Puyallup Public Library's podcast, Shush with Debbie, where we interview and connect with people of the library, city, Puyallup businesses, and the community. I am Debbie. I work here at the library as outreach technician, where I mostly do outreach, but I really do a little bit of everything. I'm super excited to welcome our fabulous guest, the president of the Puyallup Library Friends, Kathy Warren. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for being on this episode. I'm so excited. All right, let's start with a couple questions. Tell our listeners who you are and a little about yourself. Well, um, my family is from the Valley originally. Mm -hmm. I met my husband, Neil, at WSU. I've got two daughters. I've got four grandkids. The daughters and grandkids all live in Ohio, so we get back there quite a bit to see them. Uh My connection to Puyallup is this. Both sides of my family came to the valley in the 1920s. My oh. mom's family settled up in um, on South Hill. Uh-huh. My dad's uh, side of the family settled uh-huh. in the valley. My grandpa had a blackberry farm where Caldas Junior High is now located. Oh, my goodness. He ended up losing the farm in, during the Depression uh-huh. when a lot of farms went that direction. Gotcha. Aww. I remember going to the old Carnegie Library a couple times with my grandma when I was a little girl, so you can kind of guess how old I am. Oh. I remember using the old flat-top library quite a bit uh-huh. when I was a young girl. And now here I am at the Friends. I joined the Friends in 2012. Uh-huh. I'm now president of the Friends. Yes. And I would like to encourage anybody who would like to join us to come along and help us. We need so much help with our book sales. We support library programming here through our mm-hmm. book sales. Everything that we earn at our book sales and through book sales in our bookstore goes mm-hmm. to support library programming. Mm-hmm. And we need a lot of arms and we need a lot of legs to help tote boxes and tote mm-hmm. books, sort books, process books, and we we joyfully welcome anybody who can possibly help us. So we would be thankful to have you visit us. Oh, that's wonderful. So if they came into the library, they could see the little bookstore that you run, the friends run, and uh, they could get information possibly there or over at the any desk, any circulation desk. Uh, people can answer questions about how to get in contact with you. Absolutely. Okay. And there's also information online. Oh, at, perfect. On from, our website. On our website. Okay. Excellent, Kathy. I just have to say one thing, too. And I've been here for a long time, almost 16 years I've worked at this library. And your friends group is the most amazing, tightest, knit, organized. You guys are so organized. You're like a well-oiled machine over there. Every Tuesday, we know exactly what's going to happen. Everybody gets along. Everybody yes. does their job. Everybody is happy doing it. And yes. we really have one goal in mind, and that's to process books, make money for for the library. And we, we just do it. You and we do. Enjoy, we enjoy doing it so much. It's wonderful. We're all friends. It's a win-win. Yeah. yeah. The, the friends are friends. <laughs> exactly. I started calling you guys our best friends. <laughs> I love it. Okay. All right. Let's uh, ask your first question that you chose here. Where did you grow up? I think you've touched on that a little bit, but no. Uh, no. Yeah, where did you grow up? Not in Puyallup, right? No, okay. I, grew, I grew up in a lot of different places. Okay. I, I lived in six states, oh. four national parks, over 30 places of residence. Wow. My dad, I, t- I attended 10 different schools by the time I graduated from high school. Wow. I graduated from East Anchorage High School. My dad was a school teacher oh, gotcha. in the winter. He uh-huh. was a national park ranger oh. in the summertime. I will say that I grew up in Anchorage, Alaska, Okay, but that Puyallup is home because that's where our family history lives. Our grandparents lived here, and this is where we always came back to, either the house on South Hill uh-huh. or the house in downtown Puyallup. Oh, where were, oh, and that where was the house in downtown Puyallup? It's down on 6th Street. Oh, is it you still can, there? Oh, yeah. You can see it if you stand in the parking lot of the library here, uh-huh. and you look down the alley, there's a white house. Uh-huh. And that's the family house, and my aunt still lives there. Oh, my gosh. I was, that was my next question to somebody. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's yeah. wonderful. We, they've owned it since about 1941. Oh, yeah. So many roots. Yeah. All right. Who has been your biggest influence, and what lessons did that person or people 
teach you? My grandmothers have been my biggest influence. You don't realize that when you're young, Mm -hmm. but as you grow older and you learn more of their story, Mm -hmm. you, I I, I guess everybody looks back at at people as you learn their story and you Mm -hmm. admire more and more what they, what they went through in their lives. So true. I said that my grandpa lost his Blackberry farm Mm -hmm. during the depression. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he lost that farm, he and grandma and the two kids had to move in with his mother. And that was not a lot of fun for my Mm -hmm. grandma to Mm -hmm. have to do, but they did it. Now my my grandma graduated from Washington state college Mm -hmm. back in 1924 with a teaching degree, but married women at that time were not allowed to teach. So you know, he was picking up the jobs he could at the time during the Depression. There were right. not a lot of jobs. Oh. However, World War II came around. Mm-hmm. They managed to buy a house somehow. Wow. She managed to go back to teaching because the men went off to war. So she was teaching in Sumner. Good. The war ended. Mm-hmm. Superintendent Paul Hannawalt said, okay, all you women go back home now because mm-hmm. the boys are coming back from war and they need jobs. So the women were out of jobs again. Oh, my goodness. That was kind of a problem. So eventually women went back into the workforce. The, mm-hmm. the women teachers went back to the workforce. She went to work at Fife, and she taught at Fife for a long time. Oh. This grandma was a club lady. Mm-hmm. Glove and Trowel Garden mm-hmm. Club, Business and Professional Women's Club, United Methodist Women's Finance Committee. Any club she was on, she was president of. Oh, my goodness. And I remember her telling me, if you can't run a meeting in an hour, you don't deserve to be president. <laughs> so when I'm running a meeting for the Friends of the Club, fr- Friends of the Library, <laughs> I run it in an hour or under. We get through it. That is awesome. <laughs> Keeping a meeting going is such a skill. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We don't look right. We don't look Mm-mm. left. Mm-hmm. We get through the meeting. We get through a board meeting. No wonder you guys are so awesome. We get through it. <laughs> my other grandma was mm-hmm. was different. She was an overcomer also when she found out that her first husband was molesting their daughter. <gasps> she returned home. She divorced him, and she got a job as a cook in a logging camp. Oh, my gosh. While her mother and father helped care for the child. Yes. When with my when she married my grandfather, yeah. she had three more daughters. Uh-huh. Now my grandfather and his family had immigrated to the U.S. from Austria when he was wow. eight, year, eight years old. That's when his education stopped. He had a second grade and that second was grade it? education. Oh. That was it. My grandma's family had come to the U.S. from Germany. Uh-huh. They'd settled down near Silver Lake, Washington. Uh huh. She had gotten a sixth grade education. That's all she had. But wow. she. As his daughters, my mom and her sisters grew yeah. older, he felt that they didn't need more than the sixth grade education. And my oh. grandma said, there's just no way. These yeah. girls are going to be educated. Yes. He said, I will not pay for any education past sixth grade. And grandma said, fine, we'll do it. So every summer, grandma and her girls picked berries to earn the money necessary for the clothes and Aww. activity fees Aww. for junior high and high school. Oh, my word. My Aunt Dorothy, Pialp High School class of 44, graduated mm-hmm. a year ahead of her class. I think she was in the top 10. <gasps> Mildred, who was in the class of 1947, was really bright, attended business school, became a bookkeeper. And my mother, Helen, Pialp High School class of 51, mm-hmm. won the Logan Award and the Silver Athletic Award and attended Washington State on a 4-H scholarship. And this is because of Grandma and her determination that her girls would have more than a 6th grade education. Oh, my gosh. That's just astonishing. It really is. And doesn't it make you appreciate? And sometimes when you hear these stories, you just can hardly believe that that's what people had to do. And my my grandpa was a nice man. I remember him as a very nice man, but his focus... Was, was not, not that. on education, yeah, it was not but thank that. goodness hers was. And yeah. talk about determination, like you said, and perseverance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that amazing. is that's amazing. That's and to think in this day and age, there was a possibility my mother would have only have had a sixth yeah. grade education it's, in this day and age. It's hard to ma- imagine it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Those are great stories. What was the last? What was your mom's maiden name? Heil. Heil. H e i. H-E-I-L. Yeah, okay. 
All right. I just had to ask because I have a lot of German uh, ancestry. <laughs> okay. All righty. Here we go. If you could interview anyone from your life, not a celebrity, who would it be and why? You know, it would have been my grandma's yes. because I didn't ask enough questions when they were alive. Mm -hmm. I didn't ask about their family life growing up. I didn't ask about their parents, about mm -hmm. what was important to them. Mm -hmm. What was it like to be a family of immigrants? Mm -hmm. What did you think of Grandpa when you met him? Mm. Things like that, just basic things about life, how right. they felt about things. You know? yeah. I wish I would have, but yeah. you're young. You don't think about that. You think about Grandma baking cookies or getting right. scolding you for doing whatever you did or didn't, didn't do. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And as I know as I'm aging, I want to ask questions like that. Uh, that I'm afraid I won't remember yeah. from my mom. And it's so important. It's just... And to yeah. write them down and for write future them, generations. Yes. So true. Yeah. Growing up, did you ever get into trouble? Oh, I love this question. What was the worst thing you did, Kathy? I can't even imagine oh you my doing gosh. anything bad. I know it. Well, <laughs> well, in, well you know, I was... <clears throat> I was the oldest of four. Ah, you're so, an oldest too. I uh, am too. Are you really? Mm -hmm. Okay, well. Yeah. Uh, really, <laughs> only twice, maybe three times. The first time was in second grade. Oh, boy. By elementary school. Okay. We were not supposed to stay in the bathrooms during recess time. Oh. Yet one day, two girls and I decided to oh. throw caution to the wind uh -huh. and stay in the bathroom. <laughs> during recess time and i don't know if we were making noise or if teachers just just did a routine bathroom check uh -huh. but there we were little flies caught in the spider web uh -huh. and the mean first grade teacher <gasps> found us made oh. us go to her room and sit at a table with oh. our heads down oh. the bell rang and then filed all the little first graders uh -huh. And their eyes were as big as plates, I seeing us with our heads down, down on the table. Second graders, Sec Cheryl. Big second graders, <laughs> heads on the table. The teacher asked our names, and uh -huh. I said, Kathy Rollman. And uh -huh. she asked, is Iona Rollman your grandma? <gasps> Unfortunately for me, grandma was well known because she was teaching fifth grade <gasps> at Fife, and she taught there for eons. <laughs> And I said, yes. The teacher said, well, you can be sure she's going to hear about this. Oh, my goodness. And she never did. Oh, I asked Grandma later, did. and she never she never did. Aww. But I'm truly humbled we never stayed in the bathroom again. That's so hilarious. What were you doing in the bathroom? Talking just and giggling? Talking, That's yeah, just talking. Just nothing. Woo. Nothing. So, just there. So bad. Just there. You know? Just there. <laughs> I know that when, I think when she came in, we all stood on the toilets and kind of shut the door so she yeah. wouldn't find us oh, as yeah. if she's not going to look I in hear, the stalls. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Pretty hilarious. Yeah. The other time, um, this is so dumb. Oh. One day, I was about the fifth grade. It was in Puyallup. Yeah. We, we lived in Puyallup at that point. Yeah. Mom and Dad went somewhere, and I was left in charge of my youngest brother and sister. Uh-huh. He was maybe kindergarten age, and she was about 15 months younger. Maybe yeah. Maybe three and a half. I grabbed my best friend and a little red wagon, uh -huh. and we took the kids for a ride downtown. Yeah. Oh, down oh. Puyallup. <gasps> This was going swimmingly until we were on our way home, and we got to the corner of 5th Street Southwest and uh -huh. West Main. There's uh -huh. big old orange and black Copeland lumber uh -huh. across the street from us. We are waiting for the light to change, and for some unknown reason, unfathomable, I don't know why I did it to this day, uh -huh. I decided to stick my tongue out at some cars passing by. Oh, my gosh. Why? I cannot tell you why. I did not know until I got home that one of those cars belonged to my parents. <laughs> not one of my finer moments <laughs> but i got in trouble did the other kids copy you and all stick their tongues oh, out I, I don't know i yeah, was the only yeah. person stand there stick my tongue yeah. out of people you know <laughs> let's face it nothing i did would move the needle on the richter scale but when you're the firstborn, you know parents tend to look at these things as definite character character de deficiencies leading directly to the big house <laughs> but but also when you're the first when in 1976 I moved in with my boyfriend. It, oh. I was in college. Oh, yes. This was, this was up in Inclaw. Uh-huh. My parents were in Alaska. My grandma uh -huh. was here in Puyallup. Yes. And I, I think it was going to cause a minor earthquake. Yeah. But we all lived mm -hmm. through it. You all did. The brother after me, a couple years later, moved in with his girlfriend. And it, it shook tremors a little bit. Uh-huh. A couple years after that, the brother after him 
moved in with his girlfriend, and my parents helped him move. Wait. So I'll never let it be said that first, you know, firstborns don't break the ice for everybody. I love this. This is such a great story. They helped him move in. They helped him move in with her. Oh, they my carried the boxes. Gosh. It, it's so, what a, it's just the perfect story. It's, oh my gosh, Kathy, you're a good writer as well. <laughs> I love what you've written. Those were great stories. And I think you might be the first person I've ever had to choose that question. So I also love that. <laughs> okay, here comes the next one. Are you still friends with anyone from elementary school, high school, college? You know, we moved a lot. Yeah. By the time I was in ninth grade, I'd been in nine schools. Yeah. And so I did not retain a lot of those friendships. Yeah. However, by the time I got to 10th grade, mm-hmm. oh, actually ninth grade, uh, it was in Anchorage, Alaska. 10th mm-hmm. grade was high school. And I am in contact with my high school friends because I was able to stay in high school, East Anchorage High School. Mm-hmm. All the way through. And so I am in contact with my high school friends. That's great. And it's really fun. And we just had our 50th class reunion <gasps> wow. last summer. And, wow. it went, and so when I go up in the summertime, because we have a little cabin on the Kenai Peninsula, uh-huh. I am able to see my friends in the summertime. Aww. And it's really cool. And my best friend actually, from high school was my um, maid of honor Aww. way back when. Mm-hmm. But she's actually helping me set up my mom and dad's 70th wedding anniversary <gasps> this which will be held this summer up in anchorage they're going to celebrate their 70th 70th wedding anniversary that is so harold incredible. rollman and helen heil Aww. valley boy and south hill girl congratulations to them and yeah. to you all yeah. the family that's yeah. just exceptional oh i love it were your parents, grandparents well behaved <laughs> oh boy any stories you would like to share <laughs> There's only one person in my family uh-huh. whom we would all behave. We would all agree is not well behaved. Ah, and that's my father, oh. Hal Roman. Okay, he's a teacher in the winter. Uh huh. He was a park ranger in the summer. Uh-huh. He's a reader, a, a cigar aficionado, and a health nut. <laughs> He's okay, also a great. vagabond, a joker, and a wiseacre. Oh my gosh! When he was in high school, he would just take off. Yeah, adventuring, hitchhiking. It drove Grandma nuts. Grandma the oh. teacher. Oh, my goodness. Just drove her nuts. And he didn't tell her where he was going? Oh, sometimes. <gasps> oh, sometimes. I, oh, I remember her goodness. looking at him once, and she said, you going again? He said, yeah. She said, Henry, give him some money. So <laughs> Grandpa got out of the wall and gave him five bucks, because yeah. back in 1949 or 50, five yeah, bucks that'll took get you somewhere. You. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So one time, he and a friend hitchhiked across the mountains to Ephrata. Mm-hmm. He figured they could stay with his aunt Mabel. Mm-hmm. Before they got that far, they were picked up by a sheriff mm-hmm. in an even smaller town who suggested he not see their faces in the morning. <gasps> oh, my gosh. They hitchhiked over to Yakima, where they slept outside under a billboard, uh-huh. then took their last 37 cents <laughs> to buy a loaf of bread and some popcorn, <laughs> and that was breakfast. Oh, my god! they hitchhiked home. And this wow. was... He he just did this. Wow. Ironically, this past summer, he and I were going through some papers uh-huh. Grandma had saved. Uh-huh. And we found an essay he'd written in high school. Uh-huh. And it was about a book he'd read. He read yes. extolling the virtues of a vagabond life. Oh, my goodness. This explains how a teacher, him, moves his family as much as he did us. Yeah. As my mom explained, he always wanted to see the world. Yes. And never felt that having a family... Shouldn't uh-huh. hold him back. Right. When he and mom retired in 1987, yes. they took a trip to a different country every single year oh. after that. So they've been all over the world. Oh, that's then. amazing. As a joker, when I was in high school, we were attending my youngest brother's Cub Scout Blue and Gold Banquet. Uh-huh. You know how much fun those are. Uh-huh. In the school cafeteria with a family. You know how it is. You fill your eight-inch paper plate <laughs> with main courses and salad, and uh-huh. you go back later for dessert. Exactly. So I'm going back for dessert. Mm-hmm. When he emotes loudly, what's this, Kathy? Your fourth time through for the line? <laughs> Do you think I wanted to die? Oh, yes. What a guy. What a guy. Oh, my goodness. He was a wiseacre. When he taught at Sheridan School in Tacoma, Uh he and a fellow teacher would go into the classroom of another teacher, a lovely woman Uh I don't remember the name of. Uh The children would be sitting quietly at their desks in their rows, listening to her instructions. 
when Dad and Leaf would start tossing out unshelled peanuts. Uh-huh. The children looked at each other, looked at the teacher, and dove for the peanuts on the floor. Kids and peanuts everywhere. She laughed, shook a fist at them, and they strolled back to their own classroom. Oh, my god! They'd, they'd cause commotion. He was happy. Oh, I'm sure. And I bet the kids loved it, and they I bet they it. never forgot it. And there's probably not one kid with a peanut allergy back in 1964, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, that, wasn't, that was unheard of, it seems yeah. like. Yeah. Oh my on my gosh. mom and dad's first date, they mm-hmm. went hiking up Mount Rainier. Mm-hmm. Now, this has nothing and everything to do with the story. Okay. Heil women have big hips. Okay. She was walking up ahead mm-hmm. and kept feeling something hitting her rear end. Mm-hmm. Finally, she turns around and says, are you throwing rocks at my behind? <laughs> to which he replies, well, I can hardly miss it, can I? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Your family is wonderful. Laugh a minute. It's laugh a minute. And I love it because... I feel like I know you better. I mean, it's it's just one of those things. Just one of those things. And yeah. you're a traveler, aren't you? You we, and Neil travel. It seems like Alaska the, and Ohio were always those, on the airplane. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. All righty. Here we go. With if you didn't have your current career, what occupation would you like to try? Oh, this is crazy. I went to the University of Alaska Fairbanks okay. and Wazoo. Mm-hmm. During the summers, I would work in the fishing camps run oh. by Wayne Consolidated Alaska. Okay, gotcha. Wayne, Wayne Consolidated mm-hmm. Airlines no longer exists. It's okay. on business. I would fly from Anchorage to King Salmon, mm-hmm. catch a small plane and go from King Salmon to either Brooks, Kulik, or mm-hmm. Grosvenor. Mm-hmm. I love the teeny tiny King Salmon Airport where everything was done by the airport manager Mm -hmm. from writing tickets to loading luggage or unloading luggage, running Mm -hmm. the radio, etc. Everything was up to him Mm -hmm. or her, usually Mm -hmm. him. But Mm -hmm. of course, that was 50 years ago and things change. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure that's not how they do it now. But at Mm -hmm. that time, I would have loved to have had that job, physical job, but you're in charge of everything. You make everything work yourself. Yes. So I guess, you know, as much as I would have loved to have had that job then, to be in charge of, of an entire facility like that would yeah. have been so cool, very physical. Yeah. Today, I'd be happy to be the guy with the orange batons directing the planes into the gate at the airport. I love what that. What a feeling of power and controls in your hands. I watch those guys every oh, time. I'd be so good at that. You would. Wouldn't yeah. that be amazing? Wouldn't that, it would be so cool. Yeah. And at night when they're lit up, oh yeah. my goodness. And that guy, that pilot, he yeah. has to watch He has to watch. You. Yes. You are in charge of the pilot. Exactly. Yeah. He has to follow you. That's it. I just, I don't want to unload luggage at SeaTac. I yeah. just want to direct the pilot yeah. into okay. his spot. Okay. That's my job. I don't think there's any volunteer positions for that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I could ask. You running the friends is kind of like a little bit like the the salmon <laughs> port. King, King Salmon Airport. King Salmon Airport. <laughs> <laughs> that must be it. it. That must That's be it. it. Yeah. You're so it. good at it. Yeah. You're a pro. That's it. Are there any questions that you wish I'd asked? You know, I think I think I've talked long enough. Oh. I think we've covered my life. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of highlights and a lot of great memories that you've shared. Anything else you'd like us to know? Anything about the friends or You know, we have two huge book sales coming up this summer. We're always Fantastic. taking donations. If oh, people yes. would like to go through mm-hmm. their collections and sort and donate, we would love to have your books coming our way because that really is what we depend on to keep going. Yes. You know, what you can't, what you are tired of reading, somebody else would be happy to read. Exactly. So feel free to donate it our way. We also, just a little plug, we have a volunteer who goes around and we restock some of the little libraries yes. in the valley area. Right. We're trying to start a program where we we want to donate some books to the local senior living areas in the area because mm-hmm. we do have some excess books that we can put that direction. So mm-hmm. we're trying to start get that program started. Yeah. We just have a lot of different things. We keep busy. We just have a lot of ways to keep busy, and we could use every hand on deck to do so. Yes, it's wonderful. And you don't have to be retired. We would like some people who are younger and who maybe only have time on weekends or in the evenings. That's terrific, too. Yes, perfect. Okay, good. Anybody that wants to come in and join the friends and help out, let us know at the desk, or we can put you in contact with Kathy and the friends really easily. 
So with that, Kathy, this has just been such a lovely interview and time to talk with you about what you do here and your life. And I thank you so much. On behalf of the library, we thank you, our best friends ever. You you help us and support us in so many ways, and you're just delightful to have around. So thank you, thank you, and thanks for doing this podcast <laughs> episode, Kathy. <laughs> Thank you for okay. having me. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye now.